Hello, good evening, ladies. This is assessment in education course with a course code 234, and it's a level 200 course. In fact, it's one of the best interesting and um, easy courses you will read so far as education is concerned. The facilitators for the course are myself, Mr. Aaron Edwise, and I have with me here Mr. Dawson, Joseph Dawson Amoa and Mr. Yao, Henry Yao Champon. Now the course description. The focus of this course will be on the acquisition of the requisite knowledge and skills to construct, administer, grade, and interpret a variety of instruments for decision making. We expect that students going through this course should adopt that they be able to construct their own test items or questions. I mean quality questions or conduct proper assessments. And they should be able to also administer a test. That is anything that that has to do with um, organization of assessments. And also students after graduation should be able to also grade their students. I mean when you become a teacher. And we expect that you should be able to also interpret a variety of assessment instruments. I mean the results coming from the kind of test you conduct. You need to understand them. Emphasis of this course will be placed much on objective and constructed response type of tests or assessment instruments. And I know objective is not a new concept or term to you. Though the way you understood objective initially, I mean objective type of test, objective test initially will, will seem a bit different because we are going to dive much deeper. Initially, you understood objective type of test to be the A, B, C, D type. But from hence, you understand it to be more than the A, B, C, D type of test. And in addition, we have the constructed response type, which also looks like the essay type of test. Though it's not essay. And in the course of the lecture, I will, we will explain the concepts assessment of learning assessment for learning and assessment as learning which are main which are new terms in the course or in the area again we will throw more light on test validity and reliability which are the key concepts in assessment and research not forgetting statistics the taxonomies of educational objectives will also be treated because our focus is to um, train you purposely towards the national standard so that I don't the day after the college be able to write your teacher license exams and pass out with flying colors. Course objectives. By the end of the course, students will be able to First, describe the nature and uses of assessments. Next, explain the taxonomies of educational objectives. Also, we expect that students be able to explain the concepts of test validity and reliability. Like I said, they are the key concepts, the most salient issues in assessment in education. Construct validity, the construct objective type test, crafts sorry, construct objective type test, craft and score essay types and competitional test items, assemble, administer and appraise classroom achievement tests. And finally, we expect that after this course, students be able to interpret test course. Now the following topics will be treated in the course of the semester. We will start from 
the nature of assessments and we will continue with goals and learning objectives of instruction where the various educational objectives and learning outcomes will be treated we will take you through the characteristics of tests which is we have test validity test reliability and we will go through to the contemporary issues in assessments mode of assessment we are going to have two quizzes assignments and presentations now we are starting with the first unit which is the nature of assessments students of this course should clearly distinguish among the following four major terms which are which are very confusing to the general public there are certain terms we have been using interchangeably i know most of you still perceive assessment to be the same as testing so anytime they are as they are testing they think they are assessing and anytime they hear of assessment they think the person conducting the assessment is testing which is wrong though they have some mild correlation but i mean some mild relationship but testing and assessment are two different concepts they are two different ideas or technologies that we need to understand in addition to the two we have measurement we have evaluation now assessments assessment refers to the purpose for systematic and ongoing collection of information as evidence for use in making decisions of students learning curriculum programs and policies in education first let me take the key points or key issues in the definition one after the other first i said assessment is the purpose for when we say something is purposeful it means we do it on targets we do assignment we do assessments with a motive with a motive but we don't just assess anything before you assess students on a specific construct you first have to define or outline the construct clearly you first have to know what you want to assess like if i want to assess students um, in as in the core in the course assessment in education being it your first quiz i have to make it clear to you the number of units we are going to cover in the first quiz i can't just tell you we are going to write a quiz and you come with your pens and prepare with your pens and um, start to write or you just prepare without knowing the specific areas the questions will come from so first assessment should be purposeful whatever we want to assess we need to draw a clear outline we need to make it clear to the candidates or the students the areas we are going to cover the next is systematic systematic means in assessing we follow a sequential order we follow steps in assessing we start from a lower step to a higher step the beginning to end to, to the ending we don't just start from anywhere so assessment is systematic and assessment again is an ongoing collection of information the ongoing there means assessment is a process assessment is a process so it's not a product so we like i said it, it moved from one state to another and after assessing going through the purposeful systematic and ongoing um, procedures the next thing is we make final decisions with the information we gather and the information the decision may affects students learning if the assessment was um, targeted towards students learning along the day we can base on the assessment results to make improvement in students learning it might be that the students have problem or difficulty in their learning and after conducting the assessment if this is the outcome then we will base on the results to improve help them improve assessment also help to revise the curriculum being it the national or the district level curriculum results from assessments help us know whether to improve or maintain the existing curriculum we have programs programs to are improved or results from the assessment have impact on programs read at the university 
or let me say at the tertiary level or all other levels in the educational sector. Some time ago, when we had the, uh, some time ago at the college, students were awarded with certificates. It moved to diploma and now it's degree. And these are all coming from the kind of assessment we have conducted. The results from the assessment has motivated this impact or this development in the um, college, at the college level. Policies in education, the government, the Ministry of Education, and other stakeholders also based on results from assessment to make impacts in the policies of education, the policies in education. They make certain amendments based on the kind of feedback they get from the field, I mean, in the course of their assessments. There are two major procedures we use in conducting assessment. The first one is formal, formal procedures. And when we talk of formal procedures, that is when we use pencil and paper to conduct the assessment. And here, assessment is strictly done by writing, so in the form of writing. Examples include tests. Anytime we conduct tests in the class, we are conducting formal, we are using a formal procedure in assessing quizzes, examinations, and questionnaires. Anytime you administer a questionnaire to you, or anytime you respond to a questionnaire, it means you are um, you have been assessed formally. Informal procedures. Unlike the formal procedures where pencil and paper were the key is the key um, components with informal procedures, verbal communication or performance of activity activities, sorry, is the main procedure, the main um, um, the, the, the main way of conducting assessments. Here students are not asked to or they are not taxed to write, but they are questioned verbally. And as they respond to the questions, we be able we are able to gather certain information from them and I don't they take decision with the information. Examples include observation. In the course of observing, we are able to describe the um, occurrences or set, how certain activities are happening. And all the day can based on it to effect changes. Interviews. Through verbal communications, we are able to understand certain people, certain issues, we are able to draw certain conclusions based on the kind of feedback we get from our interviewees. That is the people we are interviewing. Laboratory works at the lab. The kind of work conducted there, the kind of assessment is not writing. Though there is an iota of writing, but major works are done through performance of activities. So as people are able to perform certain activities, we award the marks. And along the day, we base on the, those activities to assess the person finally and take decision about the person. And the last one is a Latin word, which is viva voici. This one too comes in the form of presenting final results from a research. And that is what has been happening at the master's and the PhD level. At the master's level, after your thesis or dissertation, you present to the um, lecturers and along the day they base on your presentation to quiz you i mean to ask you verbal questions and finally award you marks and after they base on that to they base on the results from the assessment to take decision about you now let's note that the term or the concept assessment is a broader term or it's a broader concept compared to the others the other terminologies i brought on board the test evaluation and measurement so assessment encompass all these terms the next term to consider is test and test refers to a tax that is activities in written form or series of tax which are used to measure specific traits or attributes in people or students or candidates and in con considering test or testing a question that comes to mind is always how well does the individual perform anytime you want to think about how well an individual perform on a tax on a construct on a course then we need to use a test 
and the results we get from the test are also interpreted in two main ways. It's either you are interpreting it in the non-referenced way or in the criterion referenced way. Criterion referenced or non-referenced way. And when we talk of the non-referenced interpretation of a test, it is done when students' results or the score of a student is compared to others' scores. I mean others who wrote the test or the known group to know the person's performance, the person's strength and weakness. Example, Victoria scored 87 in the test and this made her occupy the third position in her class. With this example, um, it's not reference because um, we are comparing Victoria's performance with other people who wrote the test. So for us, we have been able to bring out a position. We have been able to mention Victoria's position. It means we have compared her with others. I did not mean that it's very difficult to know her position her standing in the class. It might be that she scored 87, but the 87 without assigning any position might be uh, might um, we might assign a letter grade to it maybe a b c d but for those letters it, it, they, they do not mean victoria has performed better than anybody but so far as we are using norm reference interpretation the 87 here the, uh, is making a meaning and the meaning is that it has been compared with others and it means anybody who scored apart from victoria anybody who scored 87 to is also within the same position, third position. We have criterion reference interpretation, and that is the exact opposite of the norm reference interpretation. And with the criterion reference interpretation, as the norm was comparing with criterion, we don't compare students' performance with the norm group, that is the colleagues who wrote the test, or other students who wrote the test. But here, the performance is compared to a criterion or a standard. The performance is compared to a standard. So by comparing the performance to a standard set. So if the standard is anybody who score 80 will be given or be awarded an A. Then as Victoria was able to score 87, this means Victoria will be given what? An A. So the A doesn't mean she has performed better than anybody. Or even if she was given a B plus or B, it doesn't mean she is the first or third like in the first example. So let's see the, the, the clear difference. The first one is for comparison, or when there is a comparison, but the second one is when there is no comparison. Now the second major term is measurements. Measurements. And measurement has to do with the assignment of numbers or scores to specific attributes or characteristics possessed by a person, events, or set of objects according to specific rules. Let's take note of this. According to specific rules. We don't just assign numbers, but we base on specific rules to assign numbers. And the numbers are assigned to specific attributes or characteristics or traits possessed by a person. After a course like this course, assessment in schools, we would like to assess the extent of this construct, this characteristic or this trait in you. So your ability to score high means you have um a high level of knowledge in this course and other grades will also determine your strength in the course so measurement has to do with assignment of numbers so anytime we assign number or numbers to people's performance after they have performed an activity then that means we have measured their performance example is adam scored 16 over 20 in the assessment in education quiz now the 16 over 20 can be interpreted this way the 16 there means we have assigned a number to adam's performance in the assessment in education quiz the 16 there means we have quantified adam's traits 
Adam's characteristic, Adam's the extent of assessment in education in Adam. I mean the extent to which Adam has understood this course with respect to the first three units which were used in constructing the first quiz. And as test was um, answering or like I said test anytime we, we, we hear of test we should think of how well the trait exists in somebody in a candidate or a student for measurement because we are dealing with numbers so what should come to mind is how much how much how much of the trait exists in the candidate or in the student but not how well how well is test so how much is measurement and these are the rules I emphasized in the explanation. We have three main rules or steps used in measurements. The first is we need to identify and provide a clear definition of the attributes you want to measure from the student or candidate. I mean the person going to conduct the assessment. Before you conduct any assessment, you have to um, give your students prior notice. Let them know the areas they are supposed to cover. Let them know how the course, how the, the quiz will be um, will be constructed. Are they going to be objectives or essay? You have to describe the nature of the quiz in detail so that students will be able to prepare. Because a rate, a rate a, a, how we learn for objective is different from how we learn for essay type test. So to be fair to the students, that's what you have to do first. And next, you need to determine the set of procedures. And the procedures have already given you the procedures in assessment, which are the formal and informal procedures. We need to help the students know how the, um, the test, the attribute to be manifested. Through which procedure? It's going to be through formal means or through informal means. Are you going to... To task them to write for you to mark or are you going to question to quiz them verbally or are you going to ask them to perform an activity so you observe and score them and the final step is establishing a set of procedures for quantifying the characteristics you want to measure and here the grades we assign to students are uh, we, we make students known of the grades we, we, we will assign to them with respect to the score they have to come out with. Because as we affiliates of University of Cape Coast know, or as we are aware that to be able to come out with an A, you need to score 80 or more. To be able to come out with a B plus in any course, you need to score 70, is it 75 to 79. And I know the pass mark is um, below 50. So if you make this clear to students, everybody, you know, everybody has his or her own strengths. Some students, their target is just a pass and go. And some students too, if they even get B+, plus, they may feel that they have been cheated. So we need to quantify the characteristics. The, we need to set the procedures for quantifying the characteristics so that students will be aware and know how to prepare towards the assessments. Now try your hands on these activities. And after forward it to your your facilitators. I hope you have their contacts and they are on your your platforms. Forward it to them for for them to score for you because they are going to form part of the assessment.